Welcome to Modules in Python. Today we'll learn about modules, creating and importing them. We'll observe the module search path, execute them as scripts and reload them. And we'll learn about the DIR function and some standard Python modules. A module is simply a file made of statements and definitions. We often see modules like math and OS. We store similar code in one place. Modularizing code certainly helps with reusability as whenever you need to perform a certain action, you don't need to do it all over. Simply import the module and use its code. Sharing is caring. So this is what a module looks like at a glance. It has a name and a .py extension. Modules can help us in four ways. Since one module focuses on one thing at a time, it implements overall simplicity. If you have your code in modules and you need to make changes to it, you can simply modify the module and the rest of your code remains the same. Of course, modules introduce reusability. They scrape away the need to do things over and over again. And since a module has a separate namespace, it reduces collisions between identifiers. And how do we use modules? Python has some built-in modules that ship with it. Or you can install one using pip. You can also write one yourself in Python or even in C++, then load it dynamically at runtime. We'll learn about built-in modules soon, but first, let's create our own module so we can get to know it better. Let's create a directory or a folder and name it calc. Actually, you can name it anything you want. Great, now in this, create a file and call it calculator.py. This is what it should hold for now. Well, it is a calculator that performs six different operations. Okay, so which one is the module here? Both calc and calculator. A module can hold another, right? Let's get to the explorer to see how this looks. Python compiles each module and caches it in a folder by cache, so it loads fast when you import it in the interpreter or in code. Inside this, you can see that it holds a compiled Python file. When you're writing code and you need the module to do something for you, you can import it with the import keyword. Name gives us the name of the module. You can also import the calculator module from calc or import everything from calculator which is in calc or import just the function floor div from calculator. You can also give it an alias to call it by. Floor div now also responds to fd and fd of 7.3 and 4 floor divides 7.3 by 4 and returns 1.0. If a module has some statements that perform some initializing, they execute only once. When you first import the module or when you're executing it as a script. If you must run them again, you can reload the module. We'll see more on this in a while. Secondly, each module has its own private symbol table, which it uses globally for all its functions. This means you can access global variables in the module without having to worry about name clashes. If you import one module in another, it places the imported module's name in the other's symbol table. As we saw previously, there are many ways to import from a module. Importing a module, importing multiple modules at once, and importing a module from a parent module. 
Now you can access the function in calculator using the dot operator. You cannot call it by name yet because you have imported calculator but you haven't imported from it. To import everything from a module, use the asterisk wildcard. This does not import private objects beginning with underscores and overrides existing objects with the same names. If you already have an object path, then import everything from OS. Path from OS rewrites this. If the module name is too long for you, you can also give it an alias or a nickname. Calc will now listen to MYC as well. You can also use aliases when importing from a module. And if you are importing multiple things, you can use multiple aliases too. Now you know how to import a module. What now? How does the interpreter know where to look for it? First, it searches in the current directory. You can get this with sys.path. If it cannot find it there, it looks in Python path. This is the environment variable with a list of directories so it knows where to search. And finally, if all else fails, it looks in the default directory which is where you installed Python on your machine. You don't always have to import modules. You can execute it as a script instead. Let's convert calculator.py into a script instead. To do this, we add a few lines at the end. If name is main, import sys. If the second command line argument is 1, add the third and fourth arguments. But if it's 2, subtract them. In the command prompt now, we run a command to execute the script. Name is main so it knows where to begin. Since the second argument is 2, it subtracts 4 from 3 to return minus 1. But just because we executed it as a script, it doesn't mean it cannot be imported as a module now. And to reload a module, we call the reload function from importlib. It reloads a module and returns it. Here, importing even odd is the initializing statement that we're able to run again now as we reload the module. If you're new to a module and you'd like to see more about what functions, methods, and attributes it supports, the dir function will do it for you. Here, you can see all the operations that calculator supports. So this was about how to create your own module. But Python ships with a library of standard modules. Some of these are built into the interpreter and you don't need to install them first. Others you can install using pip or a similar tool like easy install. But some modules are platform specific and only run on certain platforms like WinReg and WinSound. WinSound is a module for Windows and it provides access to the basic sound playing machinery on Windows. And that's where we step into the world of modules and packages. For the next few lectures, we'll discuss some popular modules in Python.